Drug overdose deaths rose 30% in 2020, and early figures suggest the toll may be even higher for 2021. Yeah, so what poses the biggest threat right now? Who's being hardest hit by this? Bill Bodner, special agent in charge of the Los Angeles Drug Enforcement Administration, joins us now with a closer look at a devastating trend. Thank you for being here this morning. Good morning. I, I want to ask you about this first. You know, people hear about overdose deaths and they often ignore it, thinking it's not going to happen to me or my family. But now the CDC is saying that fentanyl overdoses in particular have killed more people 18 to 45 since 2020 than COVID, car accidents and suicides. So what is behind this? Is, is it the availability? Yeah, just to give you some perspective, I mean, it, we're talking about 275 people uh, a day that we're losing to drug caused wow. deaths. Um, th those of us in L.A., we've almost all of us have flown a Southwest jet uh, airliner somewhere. And those are 737s configured with 143 passenger seats. We're talking two of those jets full every day of people. That's the number of people that are dying. The drug causing it, as you said, is fentanyl. And here's the reason why. In one word, it's deception. Whether it's people buying what they think is a legitimate pharmaceutical pill uh, and in reality being sold a counterfeit drug that has no pharmaceutical ingredients mm. and contains fentanyl, or it's people uh, thinking they're using cocaine when in reality it's a speedball mixture of cocaine and fentanyl. It's this deception that's really uh, causing devastation right now. Well, Bill, what do you want parents to know about how pervasive social media is, especially when it comes to these counterfeit pills that you're talking about? Well, as you mentioned, um, the young people are the people at risk, right? So this is, this is the first thing. Uh, here's what's happened. You know, right now, uh, drug trafficking is in every community and in every home, thanks to the smartphone. Uh, the, the technology has really made us all a lot more vulnerable than we used to be. That's the first thing parents need to know. The second thing they need to know is that 100% of the time, these drugs are fake. Now, it's been years since we've done an investigation and actually purchased a legitimate pharmaceutical drug over a social media or an online marketplace app. Um, and, you know, young people are the ones using these apps. So that's that's the issue. The third thing is, and, and it's really the thing that parents really need to get a grip on, I think, it's the coded language that's used, okay. right? You know, these, these, drug, these drug deals are not done very blatantly on social media. There's like an emo, even an emoji type language. And we've now made an emoji decoder available to the public. If you go to DEA.gov or do a search online, you can find that. And that'll help uh, shed some light on the language being used and help us better protect our kids. Wow, we need an emoji decoder at this point. Pretty shocking for parents to hear that. And I want to ask you also, you know, it <clears throat> used to be maybe 20 years ago, meth was something that people would try to get stuff behind the counter and make it home or make in their backyard. But like this fentanyl, you know, methamphetamine is still being, it's prevalent here. Is a lot of it coming across the border still now? We talked before about this. I'm curious to know what the deal is with the trafficking through Mexico. So it is coming across the border. It's manufactured in Mexico. It's still a major issue here in Los Angeles. It may not cause the number of deaths that fentanyl does, but it does call a, a cause a very large number of overdoses that require some type of medical uh, intervention. Um, hey, it exacerbates the social issues that we're seeing on the street. People experiencing homelessness, people with mental health challenges, substance use disorder. Um, our vulnerable, vulnerable populations are, are really hit hard by methamphetamine. And that's what we're trying to do now at DEA. We're trying to really focus and address the issue of methamphetamine in those communities. It is such a tough battle. Uh, Bill, thank you so much for joining us. We do appreciate it. Have a good day. Thank, thank you. You too. Thanks.